Hello viewers, uh, uh, we welcome you all in this uh, soil microbiology laboratory. So I am Dr. Dhrubhuzuri Nath, Principal Scientist of this department. Uh, uh, in this practical uh, illustration, uh, in this video, so we will uh, explain about the isolation, characterization and purification of uh, uh, this agriculture important microorganisms. With me, Dr. Ranjuma Gayon. So she will assist, she will uh, explain all these activities in this uh, video. Myself, Dr. Anjuma Gayan, uh, Assistant Professor. So, in this laboratory, we mainly deal with agriculturally important microbes and uh, more specifically, the soil beneficial microorganisms. Now, these microorganisms, though they are invisible to the naked eye, they play a very important role in plant growth promotion by various mechanisms like uh, um, different uh, phytohormone production, then they secrete different type of antibiotics then they also help in biocontrol uh, they act as biocontrol agents so uh, in this video we will learn about the different techniques different microbial techniques uh, so welcome all to the video we need to uh, isolate the agriculturally important microbes or the soil beneficial microbes from their natural environment uh, like the soil then sometimes we also isolate them from different plant parts and also from the roots then some of these organisms are also epiphytes that is they are present on the surface of the uh, leaf etc and sometimes they also exist as endophytic organism that is within the plant or inside the plant stems uh, roots etc and these microbes we need to detach from the natural environment that is the isolation procedure but first of all we have to prepare their media that means from how we can grow these microbes we have to give them the proper nutrient combination for uh, their growth nutrient preparations for growing different type of microbes it is known as media we have different type of media for growing different type of organisms say for example growing the rhizobium bacteria we need to prepare the yema media yeast extract mannitol agar congruate media then nfp for azospirillum picoskaya for phosphate solubilizers again uh, likewise we also have three different type of media based on the agar concentration and the requirement of the oxygen say uh, we have solid media now solid media means it will contain 1.5 percent agar then liquid media or the broth it has no agar okay the agar percentage is zero then we also have a semi-solid media that means the agar concentration here is 0.15 to 2% at the max. In all these three type of media, we have used agar. Now this agar, it is actually derived from red algae, that's a seaweed, and it has uh, two important species, that is Gracilaria and Gelidium. Now this agar, it acts as a solidifying agent. It doesn't add any nutrient to the media, but it will solidify the media. Now it melts at a temperature of 85 degree, and it solidifies at a temperature of 45 to 50 degree Celsius. So now I will show you preparation of nutrient agar which is a general purpose media and in this particular media most of the bacteria can grow. So we will weigh all the chemicals first. Uh, for weighing we have a digital balance. Now this digital balance can accurately and very precisely weigh 0 0.001 gram and it is a very sensitive uh, instrument. So now we will weigh all the chemicals one by one. So first we need to tear it, that is make it zero so that we don't add any weight to it. Now we can add a piece of paper in which we will add all the chemicals one by one. So we need two extracts for that, the beef extract and the yeast extract. So we will prepare half liter of the media for that all the chemicals become half both the extracts it is 1.5 grams per half liter so we'll weigh the chemical we'll weigh the chemical first uh, then we will put it in the beaker so we have already weighed one media 
half liter of media this is again uh, the nutrient agar media so the other agar that we have to add in the media that we have to put in two conical flasks and uh, for let's say if we want to prepare 500 of ml of media the agar should be added uh, half that means for 250 ml it will be 3.75 grams so we have already weighed the agar here now we have added 450 ml of water in the beaker now before that uh, adding the media to the conical flask we have to adjust the ph in the ph meter the ph we need to maintain it is 7 so we will adjust the ph here now so we have to be very careful while measuring the ph because uh, there is a glass electrode which have to be uh, taken care of so continuous uh, stirring is required for maintaining the pH so now we have adjusted the pH to 7 so immediately we have to clean the glass electrode with distilled water Now this is around 450 ml of media. Now we have to make up the volume to 500 ml. So this is about 50 ml that is already I have uh, um, uh, put 50 ml of water in this uh, beaker. So we will add here. After making up the volume to uh, 500 ml, we have to stir it properly and then warm up a bit because so that we can mix all the nutrients, all the chemicals that we have added. Now it is properly warm and we can dispense 250 ml in each of the conical flask. So we'll take a measuring cylinder of 250 ml and and each of the flasks, conical flasks, we will dispense the broth. Agar we have already added 3.75, 3.75 in each of the flask. Now our media is ready in two separate conical flasks. We will have to cotton plug them. So we we'll put plugs in both the conical flask. Now while putting the cotton plug, we have to be very careful because we have to look for a sound. One sound should come while putting the cotton plug. That means there is no air uh, inside. So similarly, we will put cotton plug in the second conical flask. Yes, now it's ready. So now we have to cover them with brown paper. We'll cover each of the flask with brown paper very carefully Similarly, we will cover the other flask and then it will be ready for sterilization in the autoclave. We have also prepared uh, a media Martin's Rose Bengal Agar. This is for uh, culture or culturing fungi. Along with the media for sterilization, uh, we require certain other items for carrying out the cereal dilution proce procedure. First thing we require is uh, a series of water blanks. So we have to add 9 ml of water in each of the 
test tubes. We, we, we would require a series. So here in the water dispenser, we can adjust it to 9 and we can dispense exactly 9 ml into the test tube. So similarly, uh, actually we have already prepared this 9 ml uh, sterile uh, uh, the test tube and along with that, we also require micro tips of varying size these are small micro tips then we also require micro tips of uh, 1 ml size then spreaders we need now spreaders and also some micro tubes these spreaders and micro tubes we can put together in the uh, basket these are the items that we require we'll seal it properly then these are the items that we require for the serial dilution procedure now uh, apart from that we need petri plates for pouring the media so these petri plates we need to pack in brown paper for uh, dry heat sterilization in the hot air oven so these are the various uh, items so always we should prepare a checklist of the items that we require for serial dilution say we have 9 ml of uh, of a series of uh, this uh, water blanks test tubes then we need micro tapes then uh, micro tubes and also uh, distilled water in a um, region bottle small region bottle we can add uh, put some distilled water so now we are ready for uh, moving on to the autoclave and uh, for the sterilization purpose but the petri plates that we have packed so this we will we will sterilize in the hot air oven so this is a hot air oven it is used for sterilization of glasswares including the petri plates and we can uh, sterilize different type of glasswares and petri plates here uh, actually for all routine works we need to maintain a temperature of 160 degree for 45 minutes to one hour and it has uh, three periods that is the heating up period then holding period and cooling down period the main principle behind this hot air oven is it is by dry heat sterilization that is there is there will be desiccation of the microbial cells as well as oxidation of the cellular components so it will be switched on for 45 to uh, 1 hour for 160 degree temperature so this is an autoclave where we can sterilize the media and it is actually a double or triple walled iron or aluminium vessel which is fitted with a heating element, a pressure gauze and a safety valve. So the basic principle of this autoclave is that it works under the principle of a moist heat. So when we uh, boil the liquid, what happens exactly is there will be a rise in temperature. The temperature will rise to 121 uh, degree celsius and at that much of temperature the pressure will rise to 15 pounds per square inch and it will be maintained to about 15 to 20 minutes so after that much of pressure and temperature all the items will be completely sterilized and the different vegetative cells spores cysts all will be killed the moist heat will be able to denature the proteins of the uh, different microbes which are present in the media now we will switch on the autoclave So before complete sterilization, what we have to do, we, we will release the air. This is a precautionary measure. So uh, when the temperature or when the pressure rises to about uh, more than five, we will uh, release all the air will be excluded and immediately we also have to close it. After the sterilization process is over, the temperature will come down to around 70 degree and we can slowly open this um, autoclave. So this is how we open it. Now we will take out all the sterilized items in a plastic tray and uh, we will move to the laminar airflow room for pouring of the media. Now we will pour the media. Uh, before pouring the media, the important step is we have to clean the laminar airflow bench with 70% 
alcohol now the 70% alcohol it is a stronger solution and it will slowly coagulate the bacterial cells or any other uh, microbe which is present and it will completely kill it but instead of 70 if we use 95 percent or 100 percent the uh, cells will become inactive very fast but they will not be completely killed so uh, before pouring we have to switch on the flame and then uh, we can pour the media so the plates which we have sterilized we will open them and stack them so regularly we should sterilize the working surface area and also our hands before doing any work or before starting any work. So this is the media that we have sterilized in the autoclave. So we can pour it. Now it is uh, uh, we can touch it with our hand and we can easily pour the media. So again, for precaution, we will just bring the mouth of the conical flask near the flame and slightly heat it and then we can pour. So this is how we hold the plate with our left hand. We we'll just open it a bit and we can pour it. We will pour around 15 to 20 ml of the molten media and gently we will slide it through the bench of the laminar flow and we will stack one by one. Similarly, we have poured this media. Uh, this is uh, NFP media for growing the azospirillum bacteria and this is Yema media for growing the rhizobium. Now our all media is ready. We can go for the serial dilution process, which is a successive tenfold dilution to isolate discrete colonies. So for that, we need a series of uh, test tube, which is already prepared and we can mark it 10 to the power minus one to till 10 to the power minus six. The first step is to add one gram of rhizospheric soil. We can also take rhizospheric roots in case of uh, azospirillum bacteria but if we uh, say want to isolate uh, uh, agetobacter or say phosphate solubilizing bacteria or some other bacteria then we can go for uh, uh, we, we can take one gram of soil in 9 ml of distilled water so the soil should always be rhizospheric soil one gram of rhizospheric soil so this becomes one gram in 9 ml of distilled water so this becomes 10 to the power minus 1. Now we have to vortex it. Then from 10 to the power minus 1 using the micro pipette we can take 1 ml and successively we can dilute till 10 to the power minus 6. Alternately, what we can do in microtubes, a pond of microtubes, we can take 900 microliter of water. So here I have arranged from 10 to the power minus 1 till 10 to the power minus 6. In this case, the dilution becomes same. It remains same. But say, uh, if you want to go do it directly in this append of tube, then instead of 1 gram of soil, we have to take 0.1 gram soil. So now from... Uh, say 10 to the power minus 1 dilution we have to transfer instead of uh, 1 ml we have to transfer 100 microliter so this i have already adjusted to 100 so uh, 1000 microliter is equal to 1 ml that we always should remember and adjust these micro uh, pipettes accordingly now from uh, 10 to the power 1 dilution we will transfer 100 microliter to the 900 microliter append of tube which becomes 10 to the power minus 2. So from 10 to the power minus 2, we can now transfer again 100 microliter to the next tube, which, which will become 10 to the power minus 3. Similarly, we will move on to all the to the last dilution. 
that means from 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 4 5 and till 10 to the power minus 6 in each dilution we will transfer 100 microliters now for say if we want to isolate fungi we have to consider 10 to the power minus 3 dilution and 10 to the power minus 4 but for uh, routine bacteria we generally uh, take the dilution from 10 to the power minus 4 or 10 to the power minus 5 we need to transfer 100 microliters from say 10 to the power minus 3 dilution into three replicated plates so here i will take three replicated plates and transfer transfer 100 microliters to each of the plates and we'll just put it at the center of the plate so i will show one set how we do it so this is the master rotator where we can put the plates so this is r1 the application one and we can go for so before that we will uh, take the sterilized spreader and then bring it near the flame and we can go for spread plate technique so uniformly it will be spread <coughs> the same process of uh, plating we can follow for other dilutions like 10 to the power minus 4 10 to the power minus 3 uh, 5 6 and 7 so ultimately upon incubation uh, for uh, two days uh, we will get uh, discrete colonies of the particular bacteria and while keeping in the incubator we have to keep these plates in inverted position so from the laminar airflow we will straight away move to the bot incubator now this is an incubator where we actually grow all the microbes and we also maintain them okay uh, this uh, equipment it has a uh, heating element as well as a refrigerator com uh, compressor so as to maintain the temperature as well as uh, different uh, growth conditions like your oxygen concentration relative humidity etc uh, normally we incubate for two to four days some microbes may require a bit longer time say up to seven days or like that so we have learned in the laminar airflow the serial dilution technique so i will show you now how the serial dilution effect say we have done five dilutions from 10 to the power minus uh, one till five so gradually since serial dilution it is a successive dilution it's a tenfold dilution the population will gradually decrease till it approaches near zero so uh, we can very clearly see the serial dilution effect along with that we also have different types of other microbes which are already grown here so these are some of the place for the organism uh, it's a nitrogen fixer that is rhizobium it has been grown in the yema media the color of the plate tells us that because there is a congo red dye that we have added to the medium and uh, also other organisms like water uh, solubilizing then phosphorus solubilizing microbes so uh, the solubilization that how we uh, can uh, ensure Sure. that means a halo zone is formed in the outside the colony so this presence of this halo zone it indicates that the nutrient has been solubilized be it uh, uh, zinc or potash or uh, phosphorus okay so certain microbes actually if the population of that microbe is uh, low particularly low in some of the soils for those, those in such cases we go for enrichment of the media using broth Okay. So, in this case, we have enriched the media with uh, zinc, zinc broth. So, what we have observed is that where we have enriched the media, the particular organism that is zinc solubilizing bacteria, it is able to solubilize the nutrients. Okay, That means we can see full growth in the plate. It has completely solubilized the nutrient and it, it, it has eaten up the nutrients. But in the other case where we have not enriched, the organism is not able to utilize the nutrient sources. So, this likewise, we also have some uh, broths which have been prepared for biofertilizer uh, production that we will gradually learn so we have different types of broth okay so in conical flasks some in very big conical flasks and uh, we also have some other type of media so these are uh, for 
this is nfb media this is for uh, growing uh, azosparilum organism which is again a nitrogen fixer uh, once we have uh, the purified colonies we can visualize this uh, organism under microscope to uh, see the morphology as well as to understand the uh, lipid content of this uh, bacteria so for this uh, we have to go for uh, staining so this is the plate where we have the uh, purified colonies so now we will uh, pick up that one colony and then mix with uh, water to make it helicot properly and then we will prepare the slide for visualization of this uh, organism so in the slide so we have to follow certain steps we can take the bacterial colony here smear it so that uh, it can uh, cover at least one square centimeter of area and then dry it under flame for a while so that it will uh, have a very good um, smear this bacteria will snugly attach on the surface of this slide so this is called as uh, heat fixation of bacteria on over a slide so now over that uh, smear we will have to add four different stains one by one first we will use the crystal violet and keep it for 30 seconds so after 30 seconds we will wash it now in second step we add uh, this gram iodine so keep it for 30 seconds and then wash it and in the third step we have to add the uh, gram decolorizer keep it for 30 seconds and then wash it and finally so we'll add uh, this saffronine so this is also called as counter stain and keep it for 30 seconds and then wash it so after that finally we have to air dry and then view under microscope after gram staining, we, we can observe this light under the microscope. So this is a compound microscope which is fitted with a camera as well as a SD card. So we'll observe this light now. And uh, this uh, particular microscope, it is connected with the software system. And here we can ob clearly observe pink colored bacteria, which uh, tells us that this is gram negative the shape of the bacteria is rod shaped they have a higher lipid content so this is a gram negative bacteria after all the isolation purification and characterization we cryopreserve the microbial culture and preserve them in the deep freeze at minus 20 degree celsius so here we have different beneficial microbes like uh, azotobacter we have preserved them in 15% glycerol. Then we have uh, cultures of uh, different organisms like rhizobium from different pulses. Then we have some methylotrophs. Then so different other beneficial microbes are reserved in the deep freeze at minus 20 degree. So finally, we use all these beneficial microbes for preparation of biofertilizers. So viewers, this is all about the agriculturally important microbes, their isolation and uh, purification. So uh, for any queries or feedback, please contact us at the comment section. Thank you. Thank you very much.